Right, a special treat today, this short video from information that has come to light thanks to uh, John's videos that attracted a saint. He's come marching in. His name is Michael Stiff. Many of you remember the story that Yah has told over and over the day he had to climb the fence, go next door to find a little boy in the bathroom, his mother dead on the floor, the vacuum cleaner wired up by a wrong way, Reg. Bottom line is that uh, the dead lady next door, this is a photograph of her mother who lived over the road. In that day, it, uh, the road was called Old Botany Road and then later it became O'Reardon Street and, and so the address changed to 114 O'Reardon Street. But when Yah's family moved there, he was 942 days old, it was still Old Botany Road. And so Yah's family lived in number three and the house next door, of course, where the dead uh, body was found was number five. So this is the uh, picture of the beautiful uh, lady. Her name is actually Gwendolyn Violet Hale, being her um, maiden name, married uh, uh, Edward Stiff. And uh, so she was the Mrs. Stiff that Yah thought about as he was so sad at finding her daughter and, and as a small boy, just the irony of, of the name in this scenario. Let's move right along. This is amazing. So the bottom line is it was Beryl Alice Mackay, November the 14th, 1947. And you can see it says suddenly at her residence, five Old Botany Road mascot, beloved wife of Harry John Mackay and loved mother of Graham. So Graham was the name of the small boy that Yah led out. And Beryl herself was 24 years of age. Here is the family tree from um, uh, Ancestor.com that uh, Michael sent to us. You can see in the middle there that uh, Gwendolyn Violet Hale, the photograph we, we were looking at, married Rupert Edward Stiff and together uh, they had Beryl Alice Stiff, the lady that Yah found. And uh, from Beryl Alice and her husband, whose name was Harry John Mackay, they had their boy Graham, but in the Ancestry.com it's been privated because he is still living. Michael himself is making further inquiry to see if he can actually connect with Graham and put Graham in connection with Yah. So let's move on to the story. This is the house, the house on the left, number three, Old Botany Road. So that's where Yah and his family moved to. From August the 10th, 1946, Yah was 942 days old. Jesus found in 942 verses of the King James 1611 Bible. The house on the right, number five, Old Botany Road. Um, so many of you uh, know that, that Yah has always thought it was the day of Prince Charles' birthday, which was November 14th, 1948. But this leads to something remarkable. And the only reason he thought later that it was 1948 was because his mother didn't make it clear that it was uh, the birthday of Charles, but that had to have just, she didn't tell him it was the year 1947. So this is some time later. Yah's not at school yet, because he would have started in February of 1949. He, he remembers that he wasn't yet in school. So it had to have been after the birth date of Charles in 1948. However, the day that uh, he was spoken to by Gabriel the Archangel, we'll get into the numbers. It, it was actually November 14th, 1947, and let's get into some numbers as we go through this. Yes, so Michael called us on the first time on the 2nd of September, then again on the 9th and 12th of September just yesterday. Yes, he'd watched uh, Yah's videos uh, several times and uh, he 
heard Yah talk about the lady over the road, Mrs. Stiff, and uh, and and yes, Yah's thoughts as a small boy. My thoughts about that day were that she was stiff with grief. This was my recollection of events on that day when Gabriel, my angel, spoke to me. You, Yah's always said he recognised it was his voice as an adult. And this is the, uh, we'll get into the, the specifics in a moment, but this is why Yah does get very upset with others who are claiming to be, or, or you know, they're Gabriel, the Archangel, etc. No way, Jose. It is a total blasphemy to even consider it. So, you remember what happened that day? Gabriel told Yah to go next door. Reluctant, the voice was familiar. He ran to the side of the house, a dark green lattice gate. Gabriel encouraged me to climb it. Uh, it was about six feet high, um, a six foot fence to me, a small child. I stepped on the fence and began sliding down with my fingers and toes between the hardwood palings. I slipped and was impaled on splinters embedded deep into my fingers and toes. Yah writes, I then felt a hand under me. I thought I had been sprung by the neighbour and fear ran through me as my mother Daphne Golightly had forbidden me from going next door and so that the neighbour's house was numbered five old Botany Road and uh, the family home number three. Yah writes, heart racing, I was lifted off the fence and placed on the grass. I realised it was the invisible angel Gabriel. The voice encouraged me to go around to the back veranda door, go in. I did fear I would be caught, go through the kitchen, a small step. Turning left, I saw the kitchen table, a green checked tablecloth and breakfast dishes and a packet of cereal. Gabriel told me to continue to the bathroom. The door was slightly open. It was off to the right and directly in front of a tall, dark brown cupboard. To the left, the hallway turned right to the front door. I said to Gabriel, I was afraid the light lady might be in the nutty, being, meaning being <laughs> nude. Gabriel said, no, go in. I did. A woman was lying on her back, a vacuum cleaner to her right. Her dress was slightly above her knees. Her legs were a mottled pink and slightly blue. Gabriel said a little boy was asleep behind the door in the corner to my right. Gabriel said to take the little boy outside. Do not touch his mother. He woke and started to cry. I said it's okay and told him not to touch his mother. We stepped over her left leg, then the right, and I took him outside. The little boy was crying. He wanted his mother. Outside I looked around to see a sandbox to the right with his toys in it. I brought them to him, but he was crying. Then... Gabriel said to go tell my mother. I ran to the fence and started to climb. Then Gabriel lifted me to the top of the six-foot fence. I climbed down the lattice gate and ran inside. My mother would not listen. She had seen the splinters and barked at me to stay put. She came back with a darning needle and began digging the splinters out, causing a great deal of pain. I broke away as Gabriel said the little boy had gone back inside. I ran to the gate, climbed, then jumped down to the grass ran to the back veranda door, back inside and into the bathroom. The little boy was uh, laying on his mother's chest. Her legs were now blue. I grabbed him, remembering Gabriel said not to touch his mother and carried him outside. He must have been about two years old. Out the back I closed the screen door, then forced the spring latch so that it remained in the open position with the wood frame of the door jammed behind it confident he could not pull it open. Then, back to the fence, was lifted up and Gabriel said, tell my mother. She was waiting with the needle, grabbed me and sat me down and once again started jabbing at the splinters. I began to cry in pain, but to no avail. After this ordeal of several minutes, she stood at the kitchen window thinking, and I suppose realised I had been over the fence, splinters babbling about the lady. The houses were mirror ir images in that our kitchen was opposite the kitchen of the house next door. Finally, she said, wait here, don't follow. Naturally, I did. She walked out the front door and I followed to stand on the front veranda. She went inside and found the young woman dead. My mother called out to Mrs. Brazier in number seven. She had a small carpet over a line 
from her veranda to the fence beating it with a broom. She stopped as my mother yelled to call an ambulance. I think she said the lady was dead. The lady's mother, Mrs. Stiff, whose photograph we have seen now, lived across the road at number two Old Botany Road. My mother ran across the road. Mrs. Stiff answered the door and I saw the grief on her face. They walked back to number five. She, smaller than my mother, had her arm around her shoulders. They entered the house. Shortly after the ambulance arrived, the body was brought out on a stretcher and placed in the ambulance. Her husband stood between myself and the ambulance. He had his face in his hands crying. It was a Friday about midday. My stepbrother Ron had shown me how to wire up an extension cord a few days before this incident. He wanted to be an electrician. He had the cable and it had three wires, red, black and green. He had two plugs, the male and the female. I already knew about positive and negative of direct current, as in the poles of a battery. As he wired up the male plug, I said the wires would be reversed at the other end. He thought for a moment and said it was not direct current but was alternating current and did not matter, explaining the difference. Some days later, wrong way Reg, as I thought in my mind, my stepfather was wiring up a vacuum cleaner. It was light green with a chrome cap on either end and a chrome on-off switch. As I watched, he was connecting the red wire to the frame. I said to him he was wiring it up wrong, the red on the frame. My brother had told me the green was the earth wire and had to connect to the frame of an appliance. He had also explained how the power point in a house, the red and black side by side, but the earth was connected to the water pipe. Reg barked at me to shut up, big mouth. You would argue with Christ. I mumbled, you are. It was the same vacuum cleaner I saw in the bathroom. He had wired it up for her and she had it in the bathroom and she must have been leaning on the sink tap when she touched the switch on the chrome end cap and a 240 volt AC current passed through her heart. Now Michael Stiff had read what I had uploaded and was wondering if the Stiff family was related to him. Our discussion on the 2nd of September, just days ago. He said he had relatives in Mascot, grandmother and great-grandmother. I thought they must be related. He said he would try and find out if they were his relatives. I felt they had to be. This is where immigrants from the UK settled. Then on the 12th of September, just yesterday from this recording, Michael called. He had found a woman who was researching her family tree on Ancestor.com and had the names of the family. The young woman who died, as, as we've already mentioned, was Beryl Alice Mackay, 24 years of age. Her married name. She was the daughter of Mrs. Gwendolyn Violet Stiff, who lived over the road in number two, Old Botany Road. Beryl's husband was Harry John Mackay and their son, the little boy was Graham. The date, however, was a surprise, as my mother said it was November the 14th, the date of the birth of Prince Charles. But as I was a small boy, when she said to me concerning the date I had been next door and found the lady, it was actually 1947. She had said Prince Charles had been born. I had not started school, so it must have been a day or two after he was born. I started school in February of 1949. Daphne had neglected to tell me 1947. It, which makes you wonder then why she remembered the date at all. Like She had a photographic memory. Yes. She could tell you every race horse at one. Yeah. At Randwick. Yes. The Melbourne Cup, the big race in Australia, and what the jockey wore, they all have different colours. Oh, you know, and she probably read this, what we've just read too, in the newspaper. She would have read that. Probably. The yeah. death notice. So she's, she's 
she's read that. Well, she's uh, read no, that Merritt didn't want to tell me. Uh, yeah, but so it's only after the birth, it's only after the birth of Charles, which is now a year later, that she realised that Beryl next door died the year before. But oh, she, well, she you, didn't tell me. She that. didn't tell you that. So she's, as you're discussing it with her about that day, as a small boy does with his mother, and she said Prince Charles' birthday. So, uh, yeah, you naturally think. Oh, it's just amazing though. In the report, Michael emailed Ronald Stiff, Beryl's brother, had also died in the house, and it's probably why I was forbidden to go next door. He had died on May the 9th, 1947. Revealing what all this, because you knew that information, you you've known you had known all no, along no, no, that, no. that that Mrs. Stiff had lost another child in that house. Yeah, revealing what all this means, I will tell you what I think happened. Yeah, so let's yeah we'll explain Reg, but getting into the numbers is stunning. All right, so it's timing to prove absolutely a startling fact. As said my brother, my brother Ronald, because her, her brother's name was Ronald. Yeah, oh. my brother. Yeah. But uh, Yar's brother was born February 25th, 1935. So Yar's mother, Daphne, was pregnant. She changed the marriage certificate from July 20th, 1934. So that was their real marriage date. She backdated it six um, months to January the 20th, 1934. Uh, and so it meant that Ronald was illegitimate when, when they married. Uh, Yar writes, my mother was cautious around me as I was so advanced it frightened her as it did wrong way Reg. I've got to remember Ron was 8.88 years older than I. Oh yes, yeah, so it's all part of this amazing tapestry. So once Reg had arrived home from work, so this is the day that Beryl died, she told him Beryl was dead and how I had discovered the body. In the report that Michael has uh, sent through, as we read, her death was sudden, no mention of electrocution. An investigation must have been the normal procedure. A dead body turned blue would appear to be a heart attack, perhaps. But the report simply said died suddenly. Reg would have retrieved the vacuum cleaner. Had he not, the death certificate after the autopsy would have read accidental death by electrocution. No doubt Harry would have known Reg had wired it and Reg would have gone to jail for manslaughter. He knew I had told him he had wired it wrong and he knew I was always right, as in his remark to me when I told him, or he said to me, you, you would argue with Christ. And Yah said, yeah, you are. Now, getting down to the numbers of this corrected date, this is stunning. So it meant that Reg was 38.75 years old on November the 14th, 1947. 3875, as you know, is comforter and the distance from the original family home at 105 Rothschild Avenue to the South Pole. So remember, this is all about Yah. Ronald Stiff, the brother of Beryl, he had died six months earlier on May the 9th, 1947. Yah was 3.323 years old on that date. 3323 is Messiah. Daphne Go Lightly, my mother, 12,817 days old on the 14th of November, 1947. 1281 in the Hebrew Concordance is Crooked Serpent, found in Isaiah 27.1. Quoting, in that day, the Lord with his saw and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Now on that day, so Corrected date, 14th of November, 1947. The distance to the planets from Jupiter. As you know, you are always measured from Jupiter. It is the king planet. The inner planets totaled 40.79 astronomical units. Plus the outer planets, they totaled 91.23 astronomical units. So the total of all the planets 
on that date 132.02 astronomical units. In the Greek concordance, 1320 is Master, Jesus, Teacher, found in John 1313. <laughs> ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. The 912 is my birth weight, 9 pound 12 ounces. Also, the average age of the patriarchs, 912 years. Seth lived 912 years. 1313 is John's mm. um, favourite number, 1313. But it's also Helen was with Michelle. That's right. And it's also MM. Mm. <laughs> All right. So the signs here are Messiah 3323, Comforter 3825. 1281, the crooked serpent destroyed, as in Ophiuchus, December the 18th, 2022, where, and, and Reginald will get to this in a moment, but on that date, he was actually 2022 20, weeks of age. Hello. So Yah's age in days on November the 14th, 1947, was 1403 days, which is the Archangel Gabriel. And 1403 days is 3.841 years. In the Greek concordance, it is the all ruling, that is God, as absolute and universal sovereign, almighty, omnipotent. Now, 1403, Archangel age in days, omnipotent, almighty God, reading from the Revelation 1.8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. 3.841. Yah's age, 3.841. See, when, it, when he thought it was Prince Charles' birth date in 1948, it was the height of the pyramid. 4.84 years of age, the height of the pyramid with the capstone in place. That was amazing enough that this is even more amazing. And you were a year younger. Hello. A small boy, not even four years of age. Then you've got Revelation 15, 3, 16, 14, 19, 6 and 19, 15. Reading. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and we accomplished that in 2011 when we were out at the farm doing the, right. the sitting right Revelation 21, 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty, 3841, and the Lamb, so that's one and the same, and it is Yah, who is Almighty God, and the Lamb are the temple of it. It's the two in one. It's actually the three in one as the Trinity. Now, of course, so this is just leading right into, because this was the beginning of the revelation for you as this small boy on this date I'm Alpha the beginning and Omega the beginning and the ending so so we've got the beginning on that that date and and this date now being the ending with Michael Stiff his mm, it's all to do with Michael yes just amazing um, right let's move right along John fourteen sixteen and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and he may abide with you forever. It is Jesus, it is Christ, comforter, the distance to the South Pole, measuring from Yah's rebirth location, identifying who it was that was taken home from St. Margaret's Hospital, where he was born. Now, did Michael say he was also born in St. Margaret's? I think he said, yeah. Yeah, and somebody else has who has... Also found us. That fellow was here, remember? 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, of course. The electrician. Yes. Lovely. Matt. Matt, that's right. Matt, Matt, Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Hello, all of you who have been. All right, so you can read through. Oh, I'm going to finish this with that uh, video of the pyramid, the 3168. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll work it in. But anyway, 31680 kilometres around the earth through the home at Nell Street, the southeast corner of the holy city, which is Australia. The holy city of the revelation is Australia itself, the rebirth nation of the Christ. And the distance from that to Tugum is the um, Almighty as well in Hebrew. Yeah, uh, the, the solar eclipse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this, this eclipse occurred... 25th of January, 1944, 14 days after Yah was reborn to the earth. And so it's announcing Yah because it was 8888.88 miles to the rebirth location at 105 Rothschild Avenue, identifying the ruler of the pit of hell. However, from the same solar eclipse to this home here in Tugum, uh, 7706, Almighty God. Now, we've got uh, New Guinea independence. That was granted and uh, celebrated September the 16th, 1975, when Yah was 31.68 years of age, 3168 being Lord Jesus Christ in Greek gematria, and the anniversary, 47 years, which is holy and sanctified mm. and sacred, is coming up this Friday, being the 16th. So let's move right along. The planets... For, um, so here are the distances to the planets measuring from Jupiter. The total, 13202 astronomical units. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the Hebrew concordance, hello, you've got 1320. It is actually flesh body. That's what it means, mm -hmm. flesh body and master Jesus. So the stars, the planets on that day are telling you who it was that was speaking. Gabriel, the archangel. Now this fulfills the revelation where the seed and the remnant of the woman, the woman being Daphne go lightly, the seed and the remnant being the smallest part, Yah being the third child, uh, implanted by the Holy Ghost himself, not related in any way to wrong way reg. Um, this is, that, that well, day that was, was the problem. The, yeah. you, you could count. It, yes. And exactly. knew he wasn't the father. Right. But they, it, they were celibate. Right, but it was the fulfillment of oh, yeah. the, the seed and the remnant of the woman obeying the commands of God. It was God speaking to you, Michael, the, uh, rather Gabriel, the archangel, you were obeying his commands. And so it applies only to Yahweh, not the church at large, which is what the Christian world does. They think they are the seed well, of the world. They're woman. the beast, right? Yeah, they're totally. They reject Yahweh, so naturally they are the beast. Moving right along. All right, so here's Yah's rebirth day, January 11th, 1944, 1403 days. Now, um, I was looking up 2003. That was pretty spectacular too. I can't remember what it is now. But anyway, 3.841 years, almighty God. And 942 days when they moved into the house at number three, Old Botany Road. It was 134 weeks, which is, uh, praise God, from the Revelation 19.5. And the Hebrew Concordance from 113 is Sovereign Lord. Um, now, in the middle there on the left, Yah's age, 3.323 years of age, when Beryl, Beryl's brother, Ronald, died the 9th of May, 1947. Yah's age, Messiah's. And then from the falsified marriage date of um, Daphne with Reginald, January 20th, 1934, to that date, 5046 days or 720 weeks, 5046 is perfect completeness, which is all this information that Michael has sent to it. It is perfect completeness mm. of Yah's revelation, the tapestry. But it's from Matthew 5.48, as your father is perfect, 5.046, in heaven. Then down bottom left, 
Ron, rather, Reginald's birthday, 11th of February, 1909, to that date, 14155 days, which is 20, 22 weeks in one day. But it is 38.75 years. Comfort her describing Yahweh, because there was certainly nothing comforting about Reginald. But Daphne's birthday on the right, the 11th of October, 1912, she was 12817 days, or 1831 weeks. Hebrew concordance crooked serpent. So Yah writes uh, on a, a personal level that he's expressing his deep regret for the loss of the people, Ronald and Beryl, in the stiff family because it meant Graham had to grow up. Uh, I'm just wondering if Reg has something to do with Ronald's death. There's such a nickel. Oh, right. That's why I wasn't allowed to go in there. Oh. So I'd like to find out what caused his death. Yes, because he, he was only 26 man. years of age. Mm. Right. But Yah writes, we see how their existence and deaths proves my identity. The dates of these tragic events reveals to the world who I am. The children of Mrs. Stiff as saints were offered the opportunity in the pre-life to achieve the seemingly impossible and they accepted their fate. Their sacrifice completes the tapestry of my revelation that I've been weaving since that date, November the 14th, 1947. Had it not been for their sacrifice, then Michael Stiff phoning, he led to find me and willing to do the research, answers the mystery I have thought about most days of my life, knowing there was a key in those events. I had been told by my mother the wrong date, not when Prince Charles was born, but the year before his birth in 1947. So actually it was a prophecy, if you like, of the bringing into the world the Antichrist, yeah, because right. Reginald certainly was an Antichrist, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah who hated me from the day my mother told me she was pregnant, not knowing where I had come from. With Michael Stiff's research, the pieces have come together for me to finally solve the miracle of that day. And for that I am eternally grateful, as all our saints, like him, will be. And so all the players, including Reginald, must be regarded as players in the solving of the mystery of God, that no government, church or satanic body within King Charles III can deny. 666. We'll get to that in a minute. These events are simply an impossibility with man, but not for God. So here's Yah, his beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> He's wearing his blue eyed shirt at the moment. Now speaking of King Charles, let us not forget the human tampon. He was announced king, it was Sunday the 10th of September in Australia. But uh, he is the 666 and, and Yah wants to clarify uh, because there, there's like two branches, just as there is, there's two branches here to Revelation 10 and 11. So clearly fulfilled in Pope Benedict, that has to do with the church. But the royal family uh, has to do with... So Francis is the Antichrist, he has actually physically denied me to a Pope. Yes. Right? He sent us emails. Yes. Via George Gantz Wayne, the Archbishop, and others. Oh, but by his right. investigators. They were all yes. sworn to secrecy yes. not to mention my name. That's right. So yeah. he's the Antichrist. So this, this sets Charles up as the uh, false the messiah. Yeah. The be yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, the false messiah. But the good news uh, is about this false messiah, just as with uh, Francis, that they only, they're only around a short time and then they have to go into perdition. So um, you can read about this here as it explains. Just briefly, go through it. All right, the Prince of Wales in actual Hebrew is pronounced Nashik, Charles Mem Wales. The Hebrew pronunciation itself equals 666 in Gematria. 
Uh, is it coincidence that Prince Charles' official title, Prince Charles of Wales, equates to 666 in its English form and corresponding Hebrew and Greek forms? And then when translated from English into Hebrew and then compared to Gematria, it still equals 666. The statistical odds are astronomical, making this absolutely impossible and a complete modern miracle. Um, the long odds of title, Prince Charles of Wales designated in Gematria 666 in three languages, provides first pause in reader's mind. Um, yes, and then so it, it, it's going through Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom that him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and child does mean man. And his number is 603 score and 6. The article informs from Onomastics, a study of proper names, Charles means man. Um, and then the Revelation 17, 10, 11, for this does Im apply to uh, Pope Benedict, who coincidentally, not from the countdown of the Lateran Treaty being signed on um, February the 11th in the year 1929, was the countdown within the church. Because everything has to do with the church being the Roman church. Um, and so there, are, there were the, the Pope kings and Benedict was the seventh and he is the eighth. He is still alive and he does come back. Uh, so there have been seven Charles as emperors of the Holy Roman Empire, World Book Encyclopedia and other reference documents summarise the history of the Holy Roman Empire by these seven kings. This is a historical fact, but what makes this prophecy such a puzzle is its reference to the beast being also an eighth and is one of the seven. The answer is simple and right before us. They all have the name Charles. Prince Charles will be the eighth when he rules over the ancient Holy Roman Empire, the modern European Union. How is he one of the seven? He is a direct descendant of Charles VI through the Habsburg line and Gar's ancestry is through the Habsburg line as well. So this is the false messiah we have here in um, uh, the human tampon. <laughs> so with keen insight, article contains John recorded in Revelation what he saw, a literal clairvoyant vision of Prince Charles' family coat of arms. Now, Yah has actually presented all of this to the courts in 1997. And then again, in, within the documents um, prepared for Frank Banamarama that uh, were presented in 2010, etc. Fiji. Uh, in Fiji. Yes, Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten diadems, and on his heads were blasphemous names. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. The article makes it look easy by pointing out the beast, a leopard-like creature in the upper left and the dragon in the lower coat of arms. So the beast is a composite creature depicting the past. The body is that of a leopard, the feet are from a bear and the head mouth is that of a lion. The past emperors of the Roman Empire were from France, the leopard, Germany, the bear, and England, the lion. This is the definition of the heraldic beast from the College of Heraldry, and it has existed for the past 500 years. It also matches the exact description as seen by the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. The dragon comes from the flag of Wales. Prince Charles of Wales is more than just a name. It is the title of the heir apparent, now king, with the death of Elizabeth, the next in line for kingship. The Red Dragon dates back to the ancient Romans. Britannia was the head of the Western Roman Empire and the symbol of Roman antiquity was a red dragon. It is also the symbol that was seen by John to give the beast his power, throne and great authority. The article concludes amazing display of Bible interpretation. Um... Yeah, so it ends with his official title in every translation is 666 in Gematria, etc. His symbol or coat of arms was actually seen and described by the Apostle John in the Revelation. However, we know um, uh, Charles is uh, the false messiah, propped up by Israel, of course, and he was circumcised and 
What, mm. nine days after? Nine days. Well, yeah. the head rabbi in London. Right, right. So oh, he's all. Beast is a Jew, right? Yeah, he's all part of the, the Talmud, uh, uh, Jewish beast. All right, here's Yah's uh, flag Yahweh Jesus, Brian Leonard, go lightly, Marshall, and hitherto invincible, go lightly, and then Marshall. Of course, Yah is the image of the Shroud of Turin. Now I'm going to pause this and go over and just find something pretty remarkable uh, that was sent through email about uh, the Great Pyramid and the 3168, just the last. Just remember that the 3168 is the distance to the um, inner planets on the day that it was born. That's right. So, the glory of the Lord, heavens spells out the glory of the Lord. Mm. 